Hello and welcome to this video on layer 3 and layer 4 inspection. This is, a, this is a, an option that was included from PanOS 11 onwards. Uh, 11 is now becoming rapidly the, um, the operating system that's, you know, that Palo Alto are pushing and, and, and developing. Um, 10.1 actually goes end of life the end of this year and so 10.2 won't, won't be long before that follows it as well. So a couple of things to, to understand about the L, L3 and L4 uh, inspection is it's actually configured within uh, the zone protection profile. It's configured there, so it's L3 and L4 header inspection, but it has to be enabled both globally, which can be found under the setup uh, session, and there, L3 and L4 header inspection. Once you enable that, that does need a system reboot, so the firewall will reboot afterwards. It's worth remembering if you're enabling it in a production environment. And then following that, it's then configured within the zone itself. So we have our, we have our zone protection profile where the rules are created. And in our zone, when we look at our zone, we have the um, zone protection section here where we can enable the packet buffer protection. Um, which zone protection profile we're going to use and whether we're going to enable the L3 and L4 header inspection as well in there. So just to show, we'll just have a quick look at the at the desktop and just to show there's no magic trickery. The idea behind this basically is so that you can stop these packets from an ingress zone. You can stop these packets based on multiple rules um, with increased complexity depending on your, your use case um, before it even gets to, to the zone, before it even ingresses the zone. Um, today for ease of demonstration we're going to simply just use 443. So we can see now that we've got our picture off of the lovely Triumph TR7. Um, so it's all working and what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the firewall and we're going to configure our, our L3 and L4 inspection to um, to stop that from happening. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the zone protection and we're going to go to LAN PG, which is the zone that we know is our ingress zone. There is also a limit, although I can't seem to find any documentation that gives me an idea of what that limit is. But there is a limit, they do state there's a limit on the amount of um, header inspections you can have, the zones with header inspection enabled, sorry. So we're going to create our rule here. And when we create a rule, we're going to give it a name, block 443. And then the threat ID underneath is that's giving us a range there of 41 to, 50, uh, to 45, and then 68 to 69, so on. Um, that gives us a custom threat ID. So what we're writing this for now is going to appear with that threat ID. So for, we're going to use 41001. And just to, check to make sure, I'm just going to delete that again, just go back, because I keep falling foul of the validation. So basically, if your threat ID falls outside of this range, it will fail validation. So we're going to go for 41001, and that should be fine. Okay, we have the option to do a packet capture. Are we going to disable it? It's disabled by default. Single packet speaks for itself, it's going to capture a single packet and then extended captures um, linked to the global extended capture settings, which is five by default. Once if you want to send uh, an ICMP unreachable, unreachable packets uh, if packet is dropped. And then we have our log severity. So this is going to then, how this then shows up in our log. So um, is it going to be medium, information or critical? We're going to go for critical for, for argument's sake. The log interval, so the intervals are logs of the events. And then our action. So we're going to go initially with drop. So we're going to drop on this action. The exempt IP, of course, is, is speaks for itself again. So if we have a device that needs to be exempted from this. And then we have references that we can add in. So if we, can, if we have a CVE for it, if we have a bug track for it, a vendor or a reference, anything like that can be added in there for further information later down the line. Okay, so then we get to our signature, which doesn't look entirely uh, intuitive when you first look at it. So this is going to be our test 443 block. Okay, so the OR condition that you put in is sort, of, is sort of logical, I suppose. So we've got OR1 because I have no imagination. 
and then we're going to have and port our operator here so operators are obviously the greater than less than equal to range or an event and what you select here um, then changes the context underneath so if we have greater than ip version we can have the ip versions and we've got all the different things it can be greater than icmp6 type code data offset reserved and so on some will make more sense than others and of course if you want to start looking at, at what these what these are then you can um, have a look on the the layer 3 and layer 4 information on wireshark for instance on a wireshark capture uh, and that will give you sort of you can then marry them two together what we're going to go for here is we're going to go for equal to and we're going to pick the TCP destination port of 443 which will block everything uh, we can also negate this as well okay so that's our rule created um, so we so if you wanted to put another rule in underneath it within this signature we could do say um, or two and then add a, an and condition to that so two and then an and condition that would give you that logical sort of top down rule base so we've now uh, we've configured that I'm going to click OK and then we know that our zone our ingress zone where we're coming from is going to be the Chicago LAN and we know that the zone protection profile it, profile of it is, is the LAN PG that we've just been uh, configuring so I'm going to commit that and then we'll come back to the uh, to the desktop and we'll see what the result is then okay so that's now committed so we'll just close that window we'll go over to the uh, we'll go over to the desktop okay, so back on the desktop what we're going to do is we're going to simply just move on from here so we're just going to select something from here and then see if we can get to it and what it should do now is it should just sort of spin over because um, it's just being dropped. The, the traffic's being dropped from it. So if we come back to the firewall, this will give us a chance to discuss something that I, I find a little bit bizarre, but we can prove that it's working otherwise. And we go to the monitor tab. So we can see within threat now, we've got our threat that we've got. So we're going 443. The time signature is 1126. So this is 1127. So with me gabbing on with myself, that makes sense. We can have a look at the log when it finally comes up. Uh, and we can see in the log we've got TCP, it's going to 443, uh, it has been, there's been a packet capture done, we've got our, our threat ID that we've got there, our custom threat ID, a 41001. It's critical um, and we have, a, we have a PCAP for it so that we can see. And we can also see that it was dropped. So the action was dropped, uh, which we know because it's, it's not coming up. And then we've got our single packet capture there as well. And our single packet capture is showing us that we're going to the 52.182.143.210 on TCP. Okay, which we can also export. Now, if we want to sort of change that action, we can go back here. And some of you may already have seen from the logs there, if you was looking at the logs as well. Um, there's a strange thing. I'm not entirely sure why it's. I'm, I imagine it's by design. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna berate anybody particularly. So we know our traffic is client to server. We know that because we're the client. So we know that we're we're going out. Okay. We could also see that in that packet capture for the traffic there. We could also see that it is it's client server. So I'm gonna just go, go back there because I just did that a bit a bit far. So we go back here. So I've changed that now. So I've changed the action from drop to reset client. Okay, I'm gonna click okay, and then we go into commit that. And then whilst that's doing, we'll just go back and we'll just go through the logs, just the logs that we saw before from the testing that's been done earlier. So these were also, um, these logs here were also generated from a action of reset but the action appears to be alert so i'm not sure why that is because the connection is reset and when we when this finally pushes when this commits we can go and look at it and we can go and see that you do actually get a um a connection reset so if we just nip back to the desktop now 
and we check on there we can see the connection timed out because it's been dropped there's the, you know the traffic can't get through okay so I'll just pause it for a second whilst we finish the commit which is at about 70 percent okay so now that that commit is completed and if we just refresh this we'll get connection reset and we get connection reset because that has reset the connection basically because that's what we that is what we uh, we wanted however again say so coming back to the firewall we do get alert there uh, and again, our packet capture, so we can see that 11:30. And this is generate. This was generated um, automatically as well because the obviously the browser keeps trying, keeps trying, and it eventually got a connection reset from the firewall once the the policy had pushed. But what we can see from this is we can see that there is multiple ways of protecting ingress zones um, from traffic even hitting even hitting the firewall, just just being stopped. You, you know, you can. When you look at the, the, the way you can control all sorts of options within L3 and L4, um, it's certainly well worth doing and it's certainly well worth... You, the main use case I would expect for it would be protocols. So, you know, if there's certain protocols that you don't want um, on, your, on your network, um, you can block them here, they'll be blocked and that's it. It, it won't go, it just won't go any further. Um, just to look through, just to give a, a, a thing. So we've got header length, uh, type of service. You can block type of service stuff. IPv6. You could block IPv6 completely at the at the um, at the zone, so you don't have IPv6 traffic because there are quite a lot of vulnerabilities with people. You know the the twin stack systems are still out there. The the way that Windows handles IPv6 and IPv4, you've still got certain. Uh, tunnel protocols, which for the life of me, I can't remember what that tunnel protocol is called, but they uh, they came out with a tunnel protocol in order to tunnel IPv6 over IPv4. So, so that's it. That's um, L3 and L4. I think it's a fantastic um, protection. I think it's very good. I think um, it's certainly worth putting in. It's also worth doing a bit of research to find out what the limitations actually are, though, um, as you know, you, you don't want to end up destroying your firewall basically um so yeah so that's that's it for this video